Can Samsung's new Galaxy Book 3 Pro with Intel's 13th generation chips destroy Apple's M2 MacBook Air? Well, today we will find out because we're gonna compare the design, the displays, the speakers, the ports, the performance, and more. Now, the M2 MacBook Air is one of my favorite Macs out there. I absolutely love it. It does have some limitations and I really wish they made a 15 inch size, which we might see soon. I've been asking for that for a while, but Samsung just released this. This thing looks like the previous generation MacBook Air. It has that wedge shape. The keyboard looks like an Apple keyboard. Even the fingerprint button looks identical to it. The trackpad, this little cutout right here. I mean, look at this thing. It's almost like Samsung said, well, they have a new design, so we'll just take their old design and we'll run with it. Now, I don't blame them. It looks good, but it is a little sus. <laughs> now, the M2 MacBook Air got rid of that wedge. It has this flat design, like a slate design, very nice and thin. It has a little bit of curves on the bottom to make it feel a little bit slimmer, but this thing's actually lighter at 2.58 pounds. Both of these have 16 gigs of RAM and the Mac has 512, whereas with the Samsung, they're upgrading you to a terabyte right now during the pre-launch, but then they won't. Now, I had a hard time choosing, do I compare it to the M2 Air or the 14 inch MacBook Pro? Because Samsung, even though they just launched it, they are lowering the price or they're giving you a terabyte for free. Now with the MacBook, here you guys saw the MSRP, it's quite expensive, but there's also great deals out there. We'll link that down in the description below. So I think this is the most fair kind of fight. Now, if you want us to compare the Samsung with the 14 inch M2 Pro Bind MacBook Pro, let us know in the comments and make sure to subscribe. This Samsung has a 14 inch display. The uh, MacBook Air, it's, they call it 13, it's actually about 13 and a half. Of course, it has that notch in there for that 1080p webcam, which we'll be comparing to this 1080p, which somehow fits into this super slim bezel. Now, as far as the quality, I'm really surprised by this. It feels insanely lightweight, but there's very little chassis flex. It's made out of metal, feels very durable, but the screen itself is a little bit wobbly compared to the MacBook Air. Way more dense, it feels a bit heavier, a little bit higher quality, but this is not bad. Now, one thing that's interesting about this Samsung, well, first off, it does have a little bit of a larger footprint, as you guys could see right there, just like the M1 MacBook Air, but on the bottom, we have these speakers. Now, this thing does have quad speakers, which we will test out, but it can fire off of the desk, which is great, but if it's on your lap, of course, that can get muted. Now, we also have some cutouts right here, and that's because this does have a fan in there, or maybe two, I actually didn't look, whereas the M2 Air is completely fanless. Now, that might mean that this uh, chip, the 13th gen in here, could suck some good power. So we will see if it performs the same when it is unplugged as it does when it plugs in like the Macs do. Now on the sides, we also have some differences in terms of ports. Here on the right hand side, the Mac just has that headphone jack compared to having a full on USB type A, even though this thing's so slim, and a micro SD card slot, which is awesome. On the left side, both of these have two Thunderbolt ports, which is great. The Mac has that MagSafe charger, which is magnetic and really sweet. And the Samsung has an HDMI port, which is very useful. So for ports, I would give the win to Samsung. Now they also managed to fit in a 63 watt hour battery in here compared to 52 in the MacBook Air. And with that, the charger that they give you is impressive. This thing puts out 65 watts compared to Apple's 67 that you get if you upgrade some of the specs from the base, and it is so much smaller. In fact, it's actually even smaller than Apple's 30 watt charger that comes with the base one while outputting more than double. Now, as far as the keyboard feel, the MacBook's Magic Keyboard feels great, but the Samsung, it feels like Apple's butterfly keyboard. It has very, very shallow travel. It's a lot more kind of that clicky clacky, but not in a good way feel. I'm very surprised 
that they seems like they even took that part of it. Now the trackpad Max are the best. You have an even feel that you can adjust because it's powered with magnets. Samsung's is a standard diving board design like the old 2017 MacBook Air but it is very responsive to the touch, and if you're just using tapping, it does work quite well. Now, before we move on, I wanna share our sponsor's really useful app, Clean My Mac X. I bought it three years ago because it's a simple but powerful way to speed up your Mac. Now, you can delete files and junk manually, but it takes a long time to go through folders, and Mac leaves a lot of hidden files, and the same thing when you're uninstalling apps, but Clean My Mac X does it quickly and deletes everything, including system-related files. It could also auto-update apps, which is really useful, and scan and delete malware. Now, their lens tool is super cool because it visually shows you large files, which helped me find a 55 gigabyte phone backup that I forgot about. The system recommendations are also really useful and they have a menu that gives you a lot of very good info about your Mac and you can use it to quickly free up memory to speed up your programs. And Clean My Mac X can also clean up your cache, monitor health, clear your disk and much more. Go ahead and use the link in the description for a special offer to boost and protect your Mac. And now let's go ahead and compare the speakers. Like I showed you guys, the Samsung has those bottom firing speakers, but they show a quad speaker set up on their website so that hopefully they're spread out compared to the MacBook that also has quad speakers, but they fire from underneath the display towards the top. Wow guys, that was sad. I actually had to go back and double check to make sure that these speakers were all the way turned up, which they are. Uh, why advertise a great speaker system when it doesn't sound great at all? It sounds like a laptop you'd have from three, four years ago, whereas the MacBook has much better bass, the highs, it sounds better overall. Now, as far as the displays, the Samsung has an AMOLED display that they show off setting this up in dark mode out of the box. That means it's an advanced OLED. They show 2X on their website and on this little sticker. It is slightly higher resolution than the MacBooks, which is great. And it also supports 120 Hertz that can dynamically switch to 60 Hertz as well. So it's not as good as ProMotion, but the M2 MacBook Air does not have ProMotion at all. It's stuck to 60 Hertz. And as far as brightness, both of them reach 500 nits and the Samsung matches the MacBook's DCI-P3 color accuracy, which is awesome. Now, since the MacBook uses an LCD display, you would think that OLED would have much better contrast and colors, but looking at it, the MacBook's contrast looks quite a bit better and the colors look slightly better as well, playing HDR on both. Now that is because the Samsung has a much more reflective display than the MacBook. Looking at it, I basically am seeing a mirror right here. <laughs> And because of that, the contrast gets lower. Now the highs do pop a little bit more, so that part of it does look good. But overall, the MacBook's LCD looks more like what you would expect in NOLA to look like with deep, dark shadows. And also keep in mind, with an OLED, if you're gonna color calibrate it, you have to keep the brightness levels the same, or the colors do tend to shift more so. And now let's get into performance. I wanna start out by testing out the SSDs. I have Crystal Disk Mark and then Amorphous Disk Mark over, opened up right here, uh, which is just support to Mac. Of course, we have 512 compared to one terabyte. And since they're upgrading you for free, what speed do you get? And look at that, wow, that is Fast. As far as read speeds, the Samsung is 50% faster, and in terms of write speeds, 65% faster. That's a huge difference, so they didn't cheap out. Now, it is weird that the large block random reads are half the speed, but for everything else, it beats it out. And remember, with the MacBook, if you're buying the base 256 gig, that thing is half the performance. Now, of course, that might not tell the whole story because of SLC cache, so I'm gonna take RPC test project folder, 
and I'm gonna start my stopwatch over here so we can see how long it takes to transfer from a super fast Thunderbolt SSD. Now we are still plugged in and I do have Windows set to the best performance, but unfortunately we're not moving very fast and I can hear a high pitch whine from the fans, it sounds like there's two of them in here that now spun up to do this transfer. And now it's time to test the MacBook. I'll start my timer. Wow, <laughs> that took a minute and 11 seconds. Very interesting. And now it's time to test out Geekbench 6. Yes, I said Geekbench 6. They released a new version. It's a lot more accurate, more accurate for cross-platform testing. Here we have our MacBook, which has four performance cores and four efficiency cores compared to a 12 core i7 Raptor Lake. Now this thing goes up to five gigahertz compared to 3.48 on the Mac. So it should be an easy win, right? Well, both have 16 gigs of RAM and let's go ahead and test out our CPU benchmark. All right guys, here are the scores and wow, is it close. Now in terms of single core score, the MacBook beats out the Intel Raptor Lake by 18 and a half percent. But in multi-core score, the Intel-based Samsung is slightly faster here, and that is very impressive. Now, what I was really curious about was, is the Samsung gonna perform the same when it's on battery power? So let's go ahead and unplug this. I'm gonna make sure that we're set to the best performance in Windows, and let's run this again. Now what's crazy is that's showing an hour and 51 minutes of battery life remaining when we're doing this, even though the battery is pretty much fully charged. That means that you should not expect crazy battery life with this. The MacBook under the same conditions is gonna last about six hours with that M2 chip, and it's a good thing that on Samsung's website, they don't say that it gives 24 hours battery life. All they're saying is long lasting battery life all day long. So that's an improvement. But look at this. My goodness, I was not expecting this. That is a big drop in performance on battery. The previous gen, well, the performance stayed about the same on the systems, but now with these new chips, they're pushing them harder and they can't keep up. The MacBook's 9837 is about 44% better performance now compared to 6800 when you unplug this machine and that sucks. Now I understand on this fat thick laptop like the MSI Titan that we covered, which can reach over 200 watts of CPU power, but on a thin and light laptop like this, that is insane. Let's plug this thing back in here because we now know that it needs it uh, to perform. And let's go ahead and compare the graphics performance. Oh my goodness, guys, the graphics score is basically double in favor of the MacBook for compute tasks. That is crazy. And now I wanna just test it one time unplugged and it looks like the score does drop but not by that much, roughly 10%, uh, 15% or so, but the MacBook on battery performs phenomenally in terms of graphics. And I have 3D Marks Wildlife Extreme Unlimited opened up right here, which I'm going to run. It is off screen, so the resolution difference doesn't matter. And here are the results. Having the Samsung plugged in, we got 22.16 frames per second compared to 34.3. So the MacBook has 55% better frames per second when it comes to gaming. Now, of course, there's not a lot of games that are well optimized. We do have some newer ones coming out, so there's some hope for the future, but the Samsung is not a great gaming machine either. Now, I just noticed something that is very odd. The Samsung display seemed to be dim for some reason. I went ahead and I checked my brightness. It's all the way maxed out. Check the settings. There's nothing that's limiting it. It's plugged in here, but the screen dimmed on me, which we haven't seen for a long time. Sometimes old smartphones used to do that when they got hot, uh, but previously you guys saw the screens looked identical, but now the MacBook screen is way brighter because it stays full brightness, even on battery. We started this test at like 35% battery, we're still at 18. But this thing, look how dim it looks. That's something that a lot of reviewers just don't mention. I'm gonna dim down the display here to match up with this one, or at least closer to it. And now we're gonna test out web-based application performance. I have a design project here using Figma that's brought to us by 
500 Designs, one of the best design studios out of Los Angeles. Let's see how well things load up here. I'm gonna zoom in. We have pixelation, three, about three, three and a half seconds to load up that high resolution image. On the MacBook, it seems to actually be taking longer this time. We've tested in the past. Should be about three seconds too. With that said, the Samsung does have Wi-Fi 6E with better antennas, so it has faster Wi-Fi. Now I've selected 12 high resolution layers here and we are gonna go ahead and export them and see how long it takes to render. That took two minutes and 27 seconds with the Raptor Lake Intel based system plugged in compared to a minute 53 on the Mac M2 chip on battery. Now, if the Samsung was unplugged, well, it'd take about 45% longer because the CPU performance gets dropped. So that's a big difference where even in Geekbench, the initial plugged in numbers looked the same. Now, I also ran Speedometer 2.0 to check out the web browsing performance running JavaScript and the MacBook is 50% faster or quicker. So as far as web browsing and web-based applications, it definitely wins out even just being on battery power. Now, while I suspect that most people that buy the Samsung are gonna use it for web browsing, I do wanna run a few tougher tests. I have Cinebench opened up right here because I wanna see how much power does this Raptor Lake processor really suck. So let's go ahead and run Cinebench R23. I'm gonna do just a single run here and oh my goodness, 60 watts peak on this chip. Now the Mac uh, peaked at 25 watts for a split second and now it's running at about 20 compared to about, well, this is throttling down 38, 32, it's moving all over the place. Definitely getting quite hot. The high pitch fans are starting to spin up on this thing. Both of them are throttling. Now the MacBook is fanless, so it does end up dropping in wattage. Performance drops a bit but not by a crazy amount because the efficiency actually goes up on the M2 chip, just like on this Intel. So we're running at 2.4 gigahertz or so compared to about three gigahertz here. So those high clock speeds and high wattage is just good for that Geekbench score where you have short bursts, but when you get down to it, it has to throttle down. And we have our scores and we got 8,083 on the Samsung compared to 7,840 on the MacBook. So it did get a lower score. Now you guys see how the wattage ended up dropping down to almost 15 watts here. So it averaged out in the center about 18, 19 or so compared to this one about 25 to 28. Now just for fun, I'm gonna unplug this. I'll reset the minimums here and let's just see how it acts when it's on battery. And now look at that, we peaked at 45 watts compared to 60 before, and it's throttling down much quicker than before. And we have 7647, uh, about 200 points lower than the MacBook. And so it's not a huge difference, not like we saw before in Geekbench 6. But now let's go ahead and plug this back in and we'll do a real world performance test. This is Adobe Lightroom Classic for photo editing and I have 50 high resolution images here, switching through them. Performance is about the same. Looks like our MacBook finally gave us a low battery sign. We're at 10% battery life. It's amazing how much we did, about three hours or more of testing and shooting here. Crazy battery life. I'll go ahead and plug it in, and let's go ahead and export these 50 edited raw images to JPEG. All right, guys, the Samsung took two minutes and one second, compared to a minute and 13 for the fanless MacBook Air. And of course, this would go slower if you had it unplugged, whereas this, even though it's plugged in, the performance stays the same. So even though in some cases, the raw performance might seem to match up or even exceed it, um, in reality, the real world performance tests show that the MacBook smokes Intel's Raptor Lake, even plugged in. So that is pretty crazy. Intel came to defeat Apple's M2 chip with their new efficiency cores, a lot of threads, and all of that stuff. But in reality, when it really comes down to it, the performance is much better on the MacBook. The battery life is much better on the MacBook. The speakers are better. Uh, the display, even though it's LCD, it also has its benefits, a lot less reflectivity, better contrast. So in reality, this is not a bad laptop. I love how thin it is. I love the MacBook style design with that wedge shape. But if I had to put my money somewhere, 
it would be the MacBook, unless you have some application that absolutely has to run genuine Windows on it. You guys let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. Check out Clean My Mac X and click that circle above to subscribe. Check out one of those videos and I'll see you in the next one.